Okay, we live. We live. We live right now. Today is September 28th, 2024. It is a Saturday and it's pretty loud in here. But whatever. We're going to do what we can. We'll try to cut out what we can. But uh, here's the topic. Here's the topic. I thought about it last night, what I'm going to be talking about. <clears throat> and it's about brew ratio. Brew ratio. So we do have a cup of coffee right here. And let's go ahead and pour a cup. I am actually pushing myself out of my comfort zone. Meaning that here's the thing. I like one to 15 ratio. One to 15 ratio is where I love to be. It gives me enough body to the coffee. It gives me like the actual strong taste. One to 10 can be a lot of times a little bit too heavy. And as you do that, you get a little, your probably taste or whatever is, is not as, it's, it could be cloudy or muddy. Or what I mean by that is that it's kind of hard to decipher actually what you're tasting besides the coffee just being strong. So that's more so what this is. But this coffee in particular, I had it earlier, needed to dial it in a little bit. The coffee tasted a little too bitter for me. So we are drinking it again. This is under as an orange, salt orange or whatever. Uh, revisiting it because I have the Ken grinder. We'll talk more about that later. But this is a one to sixteen ratio. So let's taste the coffee. I don't think I get sweetness from it. I did use a fast filter to at least get the extraction a little more down. So that should help out quite a bit. Yeah. Coffee still kind of tastes the same. It is, uh, it is, what's up, doggy? My doggy's here. She's mad we didn't go for a walk. Um, we'll let it cool down. It's probably about four or five days off roast. I roasted this on Friday, Friday? No, last Sunday. So we still have a couple of days, really. Probably another week. But it doesn't matter. You just drink the coffee when you drink it. You, you analyze it for what it is. And this is a one of 16. One of 16, I don't think I'm that much of a fan. I like a TDS normally up at 1.5. This coffee is hovering about 1.3, 1.4. So even that degree of difference of 0.10 degrees of TDS, perhaps, <clears throat> it, it gets a little weaker for me. But we're going to see if we can taste the coffee. We're going to see if we can really just enjoy the coffee for what it is at 1 to 16. And I think 1 to 15 is ideal for most people. But the reason why I'm bringing this up in particular is because we're talking about coffee here. We're talking about how you like to actually drink it. Everybody's different. Like when I went ahead and dialed in a Mr. Coffee, for instance, I had three different scenarios. So let's just say you pick a cup of coffee, right? Uh, the amount of water that you want inside the amount of water. Okay. So now that you have that, you think about how much water you actually want. So I did it from weak, normal, and then strong, so to speak. And when I did that, it kind of came out mostly okay. But it, it's one of those things to where it's like, okay, what what does that mean to people? Those parameters, those guidelines, that recipe really kind of helps people out in a way to where it gives them a good uh, ballpark. Because at the end of the day, it's one of those things to where like, I may like what I like for whatever reason, and you may like what you like. I may say that I like it at one to 15, and you may like it even stronger or weaker. Those are the things that we have to like think about as much as we can when we're trying to help out people. But I guess what I'm getting at right now is like, how do you really like your coffee? How strong do you want your coffee? Are you thinking in the and are you thinking ahead of time? Meaning that are you thinking about are you gonna add anything to it? Or are you gonna just drink it black? What are you doing with your coffee? Really, what what are you doing with your coffee in order to enjoy it the way you do? I think that's going to be the biggest things, the biggest takeaways as we understand what we're trying to do here. You know, let me go ahead and, uh, yeah, it's so loud in here. <laughs> I should have did this earlier, but whatever. We're going to roll with it. I think people were happy with what's going on and we'll go from there. Okay. So 
I think that's an extremely critical part. I think that's something that I have to take in consideration a lot of times. I'll give you what I like, why I like it, which I've explained a little bit right now. And let's go more into details about that. So if one to 16 is probably on the verge of not being strong enough, definitely one to 18, one to 20 is a no-go for me. But again, it's interesting that you keep adding more water to the coffee. That's the story actually for another day. But the one to 18 actually tastes okay. You can actually taste more so what the coffee is. So, yeah, not so loud. <laughs> bear with me, bear with me, but we're going to work it out. So I, I guess that's what it is. I like it right in the middle. That's my sweet spot. Your sweet spot may be different. And I think that's the biggest takeaway about this particular episode. It's like, how do you like things? Why do you like it? Does it depend on the coffee? Does it depend on the actual coffee that you're drinking? Certain coffees will probably bring out more of a strong taste to you. You know, it could be a lighter roast or whatever that you need it to be a little bit stronger than you're normally used to. Or it could be a darker roast to where you want a less strong of a coffee because it's already heavy. I mean, and that's the thing about coffee. That's the thing that I don't think people realize quite a bit. It's like, it can be just so many different variables. But then again, I'm probably thinking about it too hard. I'm probably the one who's analyzing it to the point to where it depends all the time, which to me it does, because I think that's just the way things are. But if you go about that in a way to where it does make sense to you, then kind of just do what you do normally, or it's okay to push yourself, push your boundaries as much as you can, as we understand coffee even more so. What do we like about coffee? What do we don't like about coffee? And I think that's the biggest takeaway. So I know this was seems very quick and kind of interesting in a way, and I didn't go delve into the details of the nitty gritty of like the uh, the strength of coffee. But that depends. I would love to talk to other people about that to see how they like it. They probably really don't even think about it. You know, I don't know. It's interesting. But other than that, this coffee, let's talk about this coffee. This coffee more or so tastes the same. I don't know if it's going to get any better. I don't think it is. I think the grinder did help me out a little bit. But the uh, virtual Rosso, the uh, Bonavita, or Baratza, that's Baratza, yeah, Baratza. It actually was more so the same type of taste. And I think that's the, those are the things that I'm really trying to get at is that even though you may have this hand grinder that's like revolutionary, that's awesome. Even the EK43, which is awesome, it's great, right? It helps you taste the coffee for what it is. It gives you more clarity. It, you understand what the coffee can be at its best. But in this case, in this way, this coffee is, is, it just is what it is. It's, it's a medium roast. It is, uh, it's not as spectacular, especially as it was in the beginning. I think that's one of the things that we have to kind of delve into and think about a little bit more and see if we can actually enjoy the coffee for what it is. I think it'll be perfectly fine as a um, darker type of roast. Even a lighter roast. So we may bel delve into this a little bit more when we taste the light roast and also the medium roast. And these roasts were relatively normal. I would say first crack was about, for the majority of them, eight to nine minutes. Some of them probably did. One of them probably did reach close to 10 minutes. And then we just try to let it coast a little bit, kind of like slow down a little bit. We didn't want to put that much momentum on the coffee because we didn't want to it to be as even as possible for us but yeah this coffee is what it is which is perfectly fine and i think the best element for this particular coffee is a darker roast type of coffee something that's a little bit more muted but the flavors do come through just a little bit just enough to where you're not like hating and not like you just get a little taste so we're gonna play around with that we're going to see if the grinder does bring out different things, nuances, as we try it with a light roast too. I'm really curious to see how that works. I'm going to be trying the light roast kind of more so like a an investigation type of thing, a 
way to where we can truly really like analyze a coffee and kind of play around with it for what we can. I think it's going to be a lot of fun as we delve into that even more so. And when we do that, then we will understand our coffees even more. So that will probably happen in about a week or so. I do want this to probably rest a little bit more, probably during the week. I don't know, just rambling. But we are going to spend another month on just a little housekeeping, more news now. We're going to spend the rest of the month or October talking about we're trying to get our listings right on Amazon. It's looking good. I just need to beef up the listing a little bit. And then we're going to go about getting the stuff ready for um, reviews, Uh, a big campaign on reviews and all that stuff. So it's going to be interesting. So how many people we can get going and talking about the situations and all that. So coffee is is going good. I'm really liking the direction, the the drive, the grind and all that stuff of the of the way things are. And it's a lot of fun. It's one of those things to where we were like really trying to understand coffee for what it is. And I think in this best application for this coffee, this is more so for me. I don't think it's so much for you. This is more so like a roaster's eye or mind of thinking about the coffee for what it is, is that we are in a place to where we can get better with our roasting and understanding that coffee the best way that we can. And in this case, if you were to ask me what's the best way to drink this coffee, it's still to be determined. And I think in the case that it is right now, it's probably more so like a dark roast. So yeah, we'll see. We'll play around. And this is probably one of the shortest ones I've done in a while. So, which is fine. If there's enough substance here for you, that's really where it matters the most. And uh, hopefully we've talked enough. We're probably course revisit this probably with guests whatnot but the strength level of coffee and see what other people think about that because i think that's critical and important but again as long as you give them a recipe or a probably like just a bag of coffee they can figure it out they're adults they're people that have figured out more complicated things and i think that's what it is too i tend to psychoanalyze this coffee thing because I'm so close to it. And I'm sure you're probably close to your coffee journey, your saga, your dilemmas, your things that you're thinking about. But after a while, you know, it's just, once you step back, you're like, it's just coffee. It just grounds water. Yeah. Different grind sizes and different temperatures. Sure. But in its, in the, in its most simplistic world, it's just water and coffee grounds. That's it. That's all it is. And as much as I'm trying to make it as simple as possible, I'm probably making it too complicated. And those are some of the things that I actually have to work on with myself. Those are some of the things that I've dealt with dealing with the Mr. Coffee Machine. Because most people don't use like gadgets like a scale to be as consistent as possible. They use indicators. Then they use a scoop, but that's about it. And then they move on with their merry go way with their day. Things to think about. Again, I just wonder how much information I want to provide. And I want to not leave no turn, no, no, no stone unturned. And I think that's the biggest critical part about all of this is that I don't want to let anybody down. I just want to make sure that we do give people enough adequate information to where when they're playing the game of coffee making, especially if they're really trying to figure that coffee out, they have the right tools in order for them to really conquer or enjoy the coffee as best as they can. I think that's what it is. It's a little bit of divide of simplicity of what people like about coffee, but it's also another thing to where if you really want to go deep into that rabbit hole and you really want to try to figure out or this coffee's like giving you problems, then this is where I can help out even more so. I can help out in a simple recipe because I think that's what it is. I've given guidelines. I give given for instance, Mr. Coffee Machine. I give you the weak, normal, and strong levels. And then anything other than that, 
you can either add more coffee or less coffee. But if you really want to geek out and have fun and, and kind of just see where the big opportunities are with coffee, I think that's where I'm at. And it's okay to be as it's okay for me to be as critical and as analytical as deep into this thought because it's about you. I'm learning too. Don't get me wrong. I'm learning too. So this helps me out too quite a bit. But it's pretty cool that that we can do this in a way to where it's it's helping a lot of people out. And that's the beauty of like, I guess, the community, uh, the audience, the target market is that it's kind of everywhere and we're here for everybody. So that's me. Okay. Everyday beings signing out. Talk to you later. Bye. Thriller.